Windows on an Apple Silicon Mac. Is it possible? And if so, what's the experience like? How do you install it? And what about the performance? And more importantly, can we finally turn our Macs into the ultimate gaming machine? First of all, though, some important background information. Back in the day, as in pre-Apple Silicon, getting Windows onto your Mac was actually quite a straightforward process via something called Boot Camp. As long as you had a Mac with an Intel CPU, I mean, you could just partition your Mac's disk and actually install Windows directly onto the Mac so it could run natively. But with the introduction of Apple Silicon Macs in late 2020, unfortunately, uh, Boot Camp is no longer an option because Apple Silicon Macs have ditched the x86 process that Boot Camp required for an ARM-based process. So the only solution available to get Windows on an Apple Silicon Mac is something called virtualization. Now, if you're not familiar with what this is, totally fine. Uh, it's essentially just using software to split your computer's hardware to enable it to create another virtual computer. And it's on this virtual computer that you can run a different operating system like Windows in this example. Now there's a few virtualization software options, for example, Kimu Emulator or VMware, but probably the most frequently mentioned one is something called Parallels Desktop for Mac. Now those of you who've been following me for a while would know I spent quite a lot of time uh, covering Parallels on Apple Silicon Macs way back in early 2021. I guess Parallels saw all of those videos because they reached out to me to make this video using their newly updated Parallels Desktop for Mac version 20, which has actually been optimized for the latest Mac OS Sequoia update. And currently the Mac I'm using right now has just been updated to Sequoia 15.0. Fun fact, and I did not realize this when I made all of these videos back in 2021, but Parallels and Microsoft have actually collaborated together to create this software, right? And it is the only solution authorized by Microsoft to run Windows 11 on Apple Silicon Macs. And there are a few benefits to that, and I'll touch on that a little bit later in the video. So installing Parallels is really easy. I just went onto the Parallels website, and if you wanna do the same, you can use the link I've included in the description and pinned comment of this video. And you've got the option of either a 14 day free trial or buying either a standard or pro edition. Now I recommend the pro edition, particularly if you intend to do any gaming at all, because you're actually able to go into the settings and allocate more CPU cores and RAM among other things. But being able to allocate more resources towards the virtual machine to game is really important. Now, if a discount isn't automatically applied when you use my link, I asked Parallels to create a discount code which is created 10 uh, and you can use that to get 10% off your purchase. Now actually installing Windows onto the Mac is a much more streamlined process than it used to be. Uh, I just downloaded the desktop app, uh, clicked a few buttons and Parallels pretty much just installed everything I needed to including Windows 11 and obviously all the drivers required for Windows to interface with my Mac's hardware like you know, the keyboard and the trackpad, etc. Now, one thing I really appreciate about virtualization is I can actually switch between Mac OS and Windows versus having to shut down and reboot like I had to with Boot Camp. Or if I want to, alternatively, I can come up here and uh, remove this out of full screen and then just drag it onto my desktop. And then you can see I can just have it open in a corner here, Windows 11 running alongside any Mac apps that I might have. You'll also notice that all of my Mac's files are available inside the virtual machine, so I don't need to double up and waste storage space. Uh, so if I, for example, create a new desktop on my Mac desktop, uh, let's just call this, you know, Mac OS files or something. I'm sure you can come up with a more creative name. Uh, as soon as I create that on Mac OS, you can see it actually comes up here on Windows as well. And that means all of my desktop files, my downloads, Word documents, all that kind of stuff is available on both of these operating systems at the same time. This also works for apps. Uh, you know, I've got instant access to all of my emails, for example, in Mac OS. Um, if I have a password manager, I can just bring that up and I can also copy and paste between operating systems. And as I mentioned before, Parallels is officially supported by Microsoft. So you've got full access to, I think it's like 200,000 Windows apps. Uh, and of course, you know, if a particular app or program is not available on the Microsoft store, uh, I can just 
download it and install it from that particular app's website. So if I'm working a particular job or school project, for example, and I need to use an app that isn't available on Mac OS, I can just use Parallels. And if you're a frequent user of the Microsoft 365 suite, uh, you probably already know that it often works better and has more functionality on Windows compared to Mac OS, especially the Windows version of Excel. Um, so I've already installed Excel on this computer. So I'm just gonna load that up just to show you an example, uh, because this is really powerful when you pair it with what Parallels calls coherence mode, where if you click this little blue button up in the corner here of Parallels, uh, you'll see that it's actually gonna switch all of the apps within Parallels to behave more like Mac applications. So if I just make this a little bit smaller, you can see that I now have the Excel Windows app open in Mac OS, but it's actually running on Windows 11. So let's say for example, I want Safari and the Windows version of Excel open side by side. It's, I'm doing some accounting or something like that. Uh, I've got Safari open right now, I'm just going to drag that to the side. And then I can do the exact same with the Windows version of Excel running on Windows, but they're side by side and acting as if it was you know, a Mac application, which I think is really cool. Now do note that this is the ARM version of Windows 11. So there may be some programs that still haven't been updated with an ARM version uh, or just don't work with the x86 or 64 bit translation layer in Windows 11 ARM, which is kind of similar to the way Rosetta 2 works on Apple Silicon. But apart from that, you know, there are heaps of other use cases. So check out the Parallels website if you wanna learn more, because for this video, I just wanna check out the gaming capability. Now for reference, this is an upgraded M2 Max MacBook Pro with 12 CPU cores, 38 GPU cores, and 32 gigabytes of RAM. You would have seen before how I allocated the CPU cores and also the RAM to sort of give parallels as much as possible to maximize gaming performance, but also uh, keeping a little bit for Mac OS to actually run the Mac OS operating system and parallels at the same time. Now, before I installed the games, I did a few quick benchmarks to see what kind of performance hit I'd be looking at uh, when it comes to gaming. So starting with the CPU, in Cinebench, the M2 Max can achieve a score of 123 for single core and 1038 for multi-core. That's just in Mac OS, uh, not using parallels or anything like that. If I do the same test inside Parallels, I got 107 for single core and 737 for multi-core, which is about a 13% decrease in single core and 28% for multi-core, which makes sense because I'm only using eight of the 12 CPU cores in Parallels. Okay, let's start things off with some Battlefield 4. Now, this game is about 10 years old. I think it came out in say 2013 or 2014. Uh, and you are gonna get obviously much better performance if you run this natively on even an entry level Windows gaming machine. Um, but that's not really the point of this video, right? We wanna see if these games work. And if they do work, what sort of performance we'll get when they're being virtualized within Mac OS. So, as you can see right here, I have the FPS enabled in the top right hand corner and we're getting about 60 to 90 FPS. And if I just move around, uh, there's a little bit of input lag, a little bit of say screen tearing, but it is definitely playable. Um, you know, this is just a single player campaign I'm doing right now. So it doesn't have to be super twitchy. I'm not, you know, playing Valorant at like a, uh, like a ranked match or anything like that. And this is definitely playable. So I'm just gonna kill this guy. I actually remember buying this game almost 10 years ago and playing the hell out of it. Okay, let me just jump into the options real quick just to show you guys what settings I'm using. So graphics quality set to low, uh, just so I can bump those frames up as much as possible. And full screen resolution, 1920 by 1200. And interestingly enough, you can see it's recognizing the 120 Hertz ProMotion monitor on the MacBook Pro, which was cool. Now there are some games that just won't work, partly because they haven't been updated for ARM versions of Windows, and also because a lot of them like Valorant, for example, require kernel level anti-cheat software, which won't work in any virtual machines, although this is slowly changing. Also Parallels only currently supports DX11 and not DX12, although according to Parallels, DX12 support is currently in progress, which should unlock even more games to play. So for now, if you're looking to play those AAA rated games like Call of Duty Warzone, Cyberpunk 2077, or Helldivers 2, for example, 
you could consider using tools like Whiskey or Crossover, but those do not use virtualization. They're compatibility layers designed to run Windows applications on non-Windows operating systems such as macOS. So next up, we have some Assassin's Creed for Black Flag. And the performance here is actually not too bad. You'll see later on there are some games that seem to run better. Uh, this particular game, just like Battlefield 4, is not exactly brand new either but uh, I am getting some relatively decent frames here. Now, unfortunately, the Steam FPS overlay is not working, so I, sh I can't show the exact FPS, um, but I'm probably getting around 30 or 40 FPS right now, if I had to guess, which isn't incredible, um, but you know, again, still playable. Next up, we have Batman Arkham Origins. Now, this game was a little bit of a classic. Uh, it was released in 2013. It was really fun to play, uh, and now we're gonna see how it performs on the Mac. So we're getting pretty good FPS. Uh, I'm gonna say, if I had to guess, again, I can't have the Steam up, uh, the Steam overlay up here. Um, I'm gonna say around 40 to 50 FPS. Uh, I do apologize about the mouse clicking as well. <laughs> There's a lot of left mouse button spamming in this game. Um, but this is running really well. And I can imagine uh, playing this on a Mac and actually going through the story here because this is quite enjoyable. And here we have Hitman Absolution, another really awesome game, it's one of my favorites. Uh, I fully completed this game back in the day when it came out. Uh, and this is probably the game that is running the best so far uh, out of all the games I've tested today. Um, I'm just gonna subdue this guy real quick. We won't snap his neck, we'll let this one live. And uh, yeah, this was very interesting because it, ran, it runs the best out of all the games I've played. So again, no FPS counter, but this is definitely above 60 FPS. I'd say I'm almost getting possibly 90 FPS. Uh, and I understand that, you know, this is inside right now and generally you'll have worse experience outside, but I've played this for about an hour or two today, uh, including on the maps that are all outside and it works pretty good as well. Um, the only issues you'll run into sometimes is if there's a lot of stuff happening on screen, there's a lot of the NPC characters around, but even then the FPS dips for a couple of seconds and then it's perfectly fine. Now, speaking of FPS, if I jump into the options and go into display again, I'm running this at a 1920 by 1200 resolution. What you can actually do is if you've, you're playing a game that is you know, really resource intensive and you're just getting really crappy FPS, you can reduce this to say like 1280 by 720 or something and just you know, crank that resolution down just to boost up the FPS. Uh, but generally, most games are playable at 1920 by 1200. Uh, if we go into the graphics, I've just got it all at medium and some things turned off and some things not turned off. This is working really, really well. And actually, I'm tempted to actually play this uh, when I go overseas in a couple of weeks. I'm just bringing my MacBook to edit some videos and keep up with work. Uh, I don't want to take my big bulky gaming computer. So this would actually be really awesome to play on the plane just for a couple of hours. So that is Windows 11 on a Mac running virtualized via Parallels. And this was just a really short video just to show you guys kind of what it's like at this point in time, including some gaming examples. So if you do want to see a more in-depth video, let me know down below. But apart from that, hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one.